thank you and welcome um, by the name Agri Kevin. I'm going to talk about um, preventable diseases in the United States and worldwide. So in my health train I'll talk about introduction, comparison of the reading causes of preventable diseases worldwide and in the United States. We'll talk about the overview of seven dimensions of wellness and the ways to reduce preventable diseases and then conclusion and finally the reference. So in introduction, we are saying preventable diseases are diseases that can be stopped from spreading. This means that there are diseases that can be stopped through immunization, vaccination, uh, or in other ways like uh, taking meals as we are going to see and down as we are going to discuss. So it says in her year, nearly nine 900,000 Americans die prematurely from five reading causes of death. We are going to see which are those. And then they said yet 20 to 40% of death from cause could be prevented. You see, they are, going, they are trying to show us on how this can be stopped, though people are dying. So this is a good example that um, I've derived from um, I've derived from uh, a resource. This is a, a, a showing a child who is being given a vaccination. So to move on, let's now see the reading causes of preventable diseases. The first thing we talk about poor nutrition. Good nutrition, we say, lowers the risk for many chronic diseases, as we know. The example includes the heart diseases and stroke and among others. So in 2007, uh, only 24% of adults ate five or more serving fruits or vegetables. Poor nutrition is all about the foods that we eat that are uh, of good diet that will help us to improve our our health status there is another thing of lack of physical activity Fix physical activity and uh, they say approximately 3.2 million people die each year due to physical inactivity regular physical acti activities they say they reduce diseases such as the risk of diseases such as cardiovascular diseases which include high blood pressure, diabetes, colon cancer, and depression. This means that one should have to do some physical exercise to help us to reduce the, this risk of diseases. Another thing is about the tobacco use. Smoking tobacco, we have said, is the uh, is the most uh, uh, leading causes in the United States and they say it's, it's somehow un unavoidable because most of the people are consuming uh, tobacco products. They say that more than 43 million American adults smoke. You see this is a high number of people and we know tobacco um, causes risk of diseases such as cancer, stroke and many other diseases. There is also another uh, reading cause is called excess consumption of alcohol, excess of alcohol consumption. Uh, excess alcohol use in the nation start reading lifestyle related cause of death. You see, it's also among the reading cause of the death because people are drinking a lot of uh, alcohol, they consume a lot. The, as the result, they say that about 30% of current drinkers report bring, bringing in their past 30 days. You see, this is a great number of uh, uh, great number of people, and we know that alcohol excess alcohol consumption has impacts. As we know, it can also cause a river problem where it can reduce the size of the river. We all know about the um, other social uh, social effects that it brought, like domestic violence, among others. So that is all about it. So let us look now at social determinants of health. Social determinants of health, as 
the, those determinants um, like economic stability, education, social, community context, health and healthcare, neighborhood and built environment. Those are things that affect health. Let's, for instance, talk about education. An education of uh, someone can depend on how he has knowledge about maybe taking a, a good diet meal and also the important you can learn about the importance of maybe uh, having physical exercise you will not know that uh, more about uh, tobacco use and so on so the level of education also has an impact uh, on health that is among the social determinant of health. This is just an example and many others as you can see from the table like economic stability, health and healthcare, among others. So let's now look at the overview of seven dimensions. Uh, the, the, uh, we said the wellness lifestyle is coordinated and integrated in living pattern that involves seven dimensions. That is physical, intellectual, emotional, social, spiritual, occupational, and environmental. So we are going to have a small overview on, on what are these. The physical dimension deals with functional operation of the body, how the body works, and so on. Emotional dimension is that ability one is able to love, enjoy, uh, adjust to changes, cope with stress, maintain intimate, intimate relationship, and so on. The interactual uh, in dimension involves the use of your mind. As you know, the mind, uh, the, the, the brain has five senses. How do you maintain the active and that will contribute to the total well-being? So it's all about your mind. To move on. Let's now see the spiritual dimension. It involves the person's search of the meaning of direction of life. People have different spiritual dimension about life and how they, they, they come about, how life come about using different beliefs, religious beliefs and other traditional beliefs. We have so the social dimensions. It involves the ability to get along with others. It's like appreciating the uniqueness of others and feeling connected with others. It's more about uh, the people we are living around with, how we appreciate their cultures, their beliefs, their norms, and so on. Let's talk about the environment dimension. Hey, this one is about preservation of the resources. The preservation of the resources includes maybe the protection of plants and wildlife and also the environment that channels those things that surrounds us. The occupational dimension involves deriving personal satisfaction from your vocation. It's what you do to honey the living. It's from your occupational dimension. So let's move on. Ways to reduce preventable diseases and the intervention. We say that you have to reduce the tobacco use. As we know, tobacco has been contributing much to the leading causes of diseases in, in the world and also in the United States. Policy promotion. Creating policies that will help people to learn more about, um, to curb the use of some maybe product like in health can help to improve for uh, the well-being of the people. Health equi equity is the distribution of the resources maybe to different areas that will help people to get access of the services they need. Improving the well-being of the people and also eating dietary foods is like dietary foods which are able to help us to improve our health to avoid like chunk foods and so on eat fruits and vegetables and so on improving physical activities like people who are physical inactive as we have seen they are fond of suffering from diseases like copest uh, and other cardiovascular diseases so it's good to have physical activities sports and so on some of the interventions are uh, included are uh, like educational interventions like this is providing school based map interventions where students are able to give in more details about the, the effect maybe for instance of physical inactivity how it can improve their health and so on 
worksite interventions this involves maybe training workers on behavior behavioral changes and so on at the workplace so transport and the environmental design it's all about how the the transport system is in uh, designed and the environment where people are maybe can be allowed to use to walk a certain distance maybe to to ride the bicycle on the other side so that it can help people to do some kind of physical exercise improve the food supply meaning this food supply like the food that people need to live uh, that is healthy for them like fruits and uh, fruits and vegetables and so on so as a conclusion we find the five leading causes of death in the united states are heart diseases cancer chronic lower respiratory diseases stroke and intentional injuries they uh, together they accounted to 63 percent of the deaths in uh, as per 2010 so you see this is the high number and something has to be done to enable them to reduce as we have also seen there are ways and intervention aimed at reducing these preventable diseases there are some intervention as i've talked some of them there and some of the ways to reduce them so and this is an example of a, a data collected showing how deaths caused by faction preventable diseases in the world as you can see from the data they are starting from 1990 to 2017 you can see there are diseases like measles weaving cops hepatitis b and others tetanus and so on so you can see from the data you can see how the numbers are keeping increasing day in day out where others like um, like um, like tetanus somehow is, you can see it somehow decreasing while others uh, while others are also increasing like this one of tuberculosis so th it shows that there is something which has been done by different uh, stakeholders different people to ensure that the level decreases to the maximum as you can see even though they are decreasing they are not reaching to the point whereby you can say they have been fully controlled so this is where the reference was uh, the information was retrieved from and thank you for having time with me thank you